So we're gonna reconvene from closed session. Uh, just for the record, uh, Trustee Real came into uh, closed session at five fourteen. Five fourteen. Thank you. Five fourteen. Uh, so at this point, uh, close. Uh, we're coming back from closed session. The, uh, Item D, item E, recommend to to open session. Item F, announcement of action taken in closed session. There's no items. There's no actions. Take, there were no uh, action taken in closed session. Item G, presentations. G1, uh, student representatives from all the schools. Go ahead. Oh, I know. <laughs> I'm nervous. You don't have a wireless. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Does it work? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. <laughs> oh. You know what? Go ahead. Oh. Okay. Well, good, good afternoon, board members, um, parents, and students. In the past um, two months, our school has been planning. Oh, I'm Ruth. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> and I am the school representative of Aurora, and uh, well, good afternoon again. Anyways, it's over. In the past um, month, our school has has and have been planning um, various activities for our school, especially for our students. Um, our leadership ASB class. We attended the Del Mar um, conference in Del Mar. <laughs> we had our first back to school night, which was a success. And we had many parents attend and visited the classes and the teachers. Mm, we also elected our school site council parents representatives. And in this month of October, we encouraged our students to wear pink each Wednesday for our um, breast cancer awareness. And tonight, our ASB is hosting a movie night <laughs> and we uh, for next week starting monday we have our first spare week and our red ribbon week on monday it's going to be pj day and we'll we, we will pass red ribbons on tuesday it's bring your favorite band t-shirt and we will play a game by hanging apples and your hands tied and we'll give prizes to the winners on Wednesday, it's Extreme Pink, and we will hang out pencils. And Thursday is Jersey Day, and we will pass out red vines. And Friday, well, it's Costume Day, and each student will make a chain, and we will hang around the school, like, for a Red Ribbon Week. And we have a Halloween carnival, which Rockwood Elementary will be attending. It's like a carnival for little kids, and we give prizes, and we scare little kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, they like it because they come back every year, so <laughs> they like it. Um, <laughs> um, uh, our school just um, got awarded a grant of $2,500 from Walmart, and we are hoping to use it for the students and engagement and rec recognition. I can't say the word. And so school culture and enchantment and that's it right. <laughs> oh thank you <laughs> thank you miss reese and before we continue i just i just would like to announce that there are translation services available for uh, if anybody si alguien necesita servicios de traducción por favor déjenos déjenos saber porque tenemos servicios de, tra de traducción Este para las personas que necesitan. ¿Está bien? Entonces, si alguien necesita, por favor, vaya, acá están acá están afuera las personas que les, que les pueden ayudar con los servicios de traducción. Gracias. Ok. Continuing uh, uh, with our uh, school presentations from the uh, Ninth Grade Academy, Gabriel Aguilar. Thank you. Good afternoon, district officials, board members, teachers, parents, and fellow students. I will be pre presenting a brief summary of events during the month of October, aided or sponsored by ASB leadership at Clexico High School's ninth grade campus. 
Throughout the month of October, many students have participated in the following. Breast Cancer Awareness. All students have been wearing pink every Wednesday throughout the month. And we have been going against and we have been supporting anti-bullying by wearing blue every Wednesday throughout every Monday, sorry, throughout the month. Spirit Week was held through the week of October 5th through October 9th. We received great amount of participation and celebrated unity against bullying. Freshman floats and skits received many volunteers outside the leadership committee. The standards this year included a theatrical production, two or more films, and a video game. Class of 2019 chose the Hunger Games and Dirty Dancing as our films, which were created by Lionsgate. And the video game chosen was Guitar Hero. Also concluding with the homecoming, Saturday, October 10th, ASB leadership teamed up with the main campus leadership members and set up decor. In the end, we had an amazing outcome in which students participated. Lastly, today was our first class of 2019 campus pep rally. Many students showed immense spirit. The main reason we held a pep rally was to congratulate fall season athletes, which included football, volleyball, girls, tennis, cheer, and cross country. Also, special recognition to Luz Martinez, who is a freshman in our varsity volleyball team. Thank you for your time and consideration, and have a great day. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Aguilar. And now from Calexico High School, Ira Martinez. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ira Martinez, and I'm the public relations for Calexico High School. In our school's ASB, we have done two successful pep rallies, one of which is our welcome back pep rally that we have our second Friday of the week. And our battle of the classes where the freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors compete against each other. Thank God the seniors won like always. So <laughs> we also organized one out of our three blood drives and broke our record of 200 units of blood. We completed our homecoming week that consisted of spirit week, homecoming skits, homecoming floats, parade, homecoming game, and the dance. On Wednesday, on the month of October, Calexico High School wears pink to support cancer awareness. And lastly, today we had our locks of love, which four girls have donated eight inches of their hair to support the girls in need. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Martinez. Now from Enrique Camarena, Julissa Ceseña. Good afternoon, board members, administrators, teachers, parents, and fellow students. First, I would like to introduce myself. I am Julissa Ceseña, newly elected ASB president. I am currently an eighth grader and a second year leadership student. We have enjoyed a great beginning at Enrique Camarena this school year. Our theme for the year is to promote the positive, and our ASB leadership class welcomed every student the first day of school and hoped to make it a positive experience. We also started a house competition this year. Each block one class is a house, and they have been given the opportunity to name their houses. They earn points for a variety of things, such as participating in spirit days, recycling, having good attendance, and participation in field games during special competitions after school. Currently, we are preparing for our annual Red Ribbon Week activities. During our spirit week, we are having mustache day, squad day, zombie day, or they can wear pink on Wednesdays, throwback Thursday, and a costume day. Along with this, we will be hosting an I Think Big assembly, assembly for our students next Thursday. There will also be a fall carnival next Friday, complete with a haunted maze and some house competitions. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Senya. And last but not least, from Willy Moreno, Johnny Valenzuela. Woo. I am Ms. Raul Gutierrez. Good afternoon, board members, parents, Calexico staff, and my fellow peers. My name is Israel Gutierrez. I am the vice president of Willy Moreno Associated Student Body. We are here to talk about events and activities that have taken place in our school and what we will do in the future. At the end of August, we had a pep rally and the Calexico drum line performed. They brought spirit to our campus. Some of our other noon activities have been blindfolded musical chairs, Simon Says, and many others. All of these events happen during lunch. We also have an ASB store open during lunch, accompanied by Accelerated Reader and the Mass Store, which we give out prices. We have also had a success week. Many activities to promote college education and future careers. For example, 
inspirational quote Wednesday, college gear Thursday, and dress for your success Friday. We are doing something called houses. Each block one class has chosen a house name and an Aztec symbol for their houses. They get points by participating in activities and events like back to school night, math night, spirit week, and many more. Our leadership class attended a field trip to Cata. Our class learned many useful skills that we will need to succeed in this school year. Now for the upcoming events for October and November. Tomorrow we will be having a BMX bike show for the students to kick off Red Ribbon Week. And we hope that the students will have a good time during the BMX bike show. The second activity will be Red Ribbon Week and it will take place on October 26th through October 30. The next activity will be the Canned Food Drive and it will take place on November 2. The next activity will be the Turkey Run. We will also be creating more Aztec news. The last activity we will be having is Field Day. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Thank you. So that was our steward, our students representatives from all of our uh, upper upper schools. Uh, now our item G2 is students of the month recognitions. And uh, we will have Ms. Real come up to the podium, to the front and present those to our students. <laughs> So, from Aurora High School, Salma Karen Flores. Mm. Salma describes herself as a friendly and a hard worker. Her favorite thing to do in her spare time is spending time with her friends. What she really wants to do in her life is be a psychologist. Someone she looks up to is her mom because she's a very wise and strong, hardworking woman. Um, an important lesson she has learned is better throughout her life is better to do things now than later. And the one thing that motivates her is her family and having money. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And also for Aurora High School, Ricardo Zuniga Quintero. Are you here, Ricardo? There we go. All right. Ricardo describes himself as a happy and a more responsible student than before. His favorite thing to do in his spare time is playing sports and doing extracurricular activities. He wants to be an uh, electrician engineer and someone he looks up to is Art Arnold Schwarzenegger because, <laughs> I don't want to say the last name, I'm sorry, I, because <laughs> he's an inspirational person. A life, a life lesson he has learned about so far is not to leave everything at the last minute and one thing he, that motivates him is his girlfriend and his family. Thank you. Okay, from from Calexico High School, Maria Campoy. Are you here? There we go. Are your parents here? Maria. Maria. Are your parents here? Front and center. Maria Fernanda Campoy is 17 years old and is a senior at Calexico High School. Maria Fernanda likes all of her classes, but Art 1 with Mr. Santillanes is her favorite this school year. This is largely due to the fact that she enjoys drawing. Maria Fernanda also enjoys going to the assemblies and being with her friends. Although Maria Fernanda is very much enjoying her senior year, she says she has more homework and work in general than in any years prior. Maria Fernanda says that in her four years as a student at Calexico High School that Ms. Estrada is by far her favorite teacher and has had the biggest influence on her and that she is constantly laughing at her jokes. Maria Fernanda plans on going to IVC next year and would like to study at the university in San Diego. Thereafter, for the purpose of studying animals with an emphasis on marine organisms. And Maria Fernanda's long-term ambition is to one day work at SeaWorld. Ah.
And uh, also from Calexico High School, Raul Gutierrez. Raul, are you here? There we go. Raul, are your parents here? Bring them, bring them along. Thank you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go. Raul Gutierrez is 17 year old, 17 years old, and is a senior at Calexico High School. Raul likes coming to school, attempting new endeavors, and he likes the clubs he is a part of. Raul has been a student in the Calexico Unified School District since kindergarten. At present, he is the ASB president, FFA section officer for the whole valley, and a member of the Mighty Bulldog Marching Band, and is a member of APYL and MESA. Raul is currently enrolled in three advanced placement classes, AP Calculus, AP English Literature, AP Government, and Economics. His favorite class this year is AP Calculus. His, fa oh, I was in that. <laughs> His favorite, this school year has been different for Raul because in addition to being ASB president, he has to keep up with his grades. Raul averages three to four hours of homework daily. Raul's favorite moment in the last four years as a student at Calexico High School has been the parliamentary procedures, also called Parley Pro. Parley Pro is an FFA competition in which CHS competes against other high schools in the state. This exciting event happened during Raul's sophomore and junior year. Raul's favorite moment this particular school year was the first pep rally and seeing the acceleration of students on campus while he was the MC. Raul would like to attend Cal Poly San Luis Obispo and study mechanical engineering so that one day he may become an engineer. Thank you. Now for the ninth grade academy, Paula Paula Ambriz, are you here? Come on up. Go. Go. Bring your parents. Paula Ambriz is the daughter of Carmen Ambriz and Maria Moreno. Her favorite course at Dianza Ninth Grade Academy is biology because she enjoys science. Paula is undecided about which university to attend because she knows she will apply. She plans on majoring in the field of chemistry or physics because she enjoys multiple forms of science. If she could change anything in this world, she would end poverty and unemployment because it's a very important issue at this moment. Congratulations. Congratulations, Paula. Now, from the Ninth Grade Academy as well, Sergio Art Arteaga Jr. <laughs> Sergio Arteaga is the son of Sergio Arteaga and Zochi Arteaga. His favorite course at Dianza Ninth Grade Academy is algebra because he enjoys the challenge faced with complicated problems. Sergio plans on attending UCSD since majoring since relatives majored there and attended. He hasn't decided on the career path he favors, but always keeps an open eye for options. If Sergio can change something in this world, he would choose to end world hunger because he believes everyone deserves to eat. Congratulations. Now from Enrique Camarena, Alejandra Jimenez. Are you here? There we go. Alejandra Jimenez is an eighth grade student at Enrique Camarena. She is the daughter of Bertha Sanchez and Rafael Jimenez. Her hobbies are drawing, reading, running, and sometimes singing. Her favorite subject is math. When she graduates, she would like to attend college or a university, get a job, and when she finishes those school years, she would like to become a doctor. She would like to thank her parents, grandparents, brothers, cousins, and friends because they are always there to support her, encourage her to try her best, and make her happy. Congratulations, Alejandra. Next, from Enrique Camarena, Eric Brito. Here he is. Eric Brito is an eighth grade student at Enrique Camarena. He is the son of Maria Coronado. 
His hobbies are playing video games, drawing, reading, and watching cartoons. His favorite subject in school is science. When he graduates, he would like to go to UCSD and study engineering. He would like to thank his mother and brother because they have encouraged him and influenced him to become who he is today. All right. Uh, and last but not least from Will, uh, from Willy Moreno, Marta Gonzalez. Well, I guess I didn't get to fully introduce myself. My name is Johnny Valentola, and I am the current ASB president for Willie Moreno Junior High. Um, Willie Moreno's student, uh, September student of the month is a seventh grader named Martha E. Gonzalez. Martha is the daughter of Maria and Jose Gonzalez and sister to Aurora. Martha maintains a 4.0 GPA, and her favorite school subject is science. Martha's favorite color is purple, and in her spare time, she loves to eat mashed potatoes and listen to 80s rock. Martha's dream is to attend college in California and become an animator. Congratulations, Martha. All right, Martha, congratulations. Yeah. And last but not least, from Willy Moreno, Jocelyn Beltran Leon. Here we go. Willie Moreno's October Student of the Month is an 8th grader named Jocelyn Betran Leon. Jocelyn is the daughter of Omar Betran and Esmeralda Leon, and she has one, and one of her siblings is named Cynthia. Jocelyn loves math, and when she isn't busy maintaining her 4.0 GPA, she enjoys listening to pop music and eating Italian food. Jocelyn plans to graduate from high school with a 4.0 GPA and hopes to study landscape architecture at the Academy of Art University. She would also love to visit Barboa and the continent of Europe. Jocelyn's role models are her parents, and she wishes to buy a house for them in the future. Way to go, Jocelyn. Thank you, and... Now, as we start the, uh, this tradition that we started last year, we have uh, employee recognitions. So we have basically employee of the month. So at this point, Ms. Randall is going to do the honors. Good evening. I'm going to invite to the podium Mr. Mariano Velas so that he can recognize <laughs> our employee of the month, our two employee of the month from Willie Moreno, Gladys Baltazar, and Karina Tavares. Gladys, one, uh, one of our newest Aztecs, Gladys is the embodiment of efficiency. She is self-driven, caring, and friendly, always service with a smile. We are very fortunate to have her as a member of our Aztec family, and we wish to extend her our sincere gratitude. Gladys, thank you for your dedication and commitment to our students and staff. Congratulations on this very well-deserved honor. Okay, Corey, come on up. Okay, Corey, today has been quite the ride. But now it's over and you're on the other side. You've been up, you've been down, you've been tossed all around. And now the day is through, so is the work, and so are you. Take a deep breath and take stock of all you've done. Then relax, take a break, and prepare for another one. This is a typical day in education, and it's not often that we hear job well done. So to our fabulous, tireless assistant principal, we say thank you for your dedication, your hard work, and endless efforts for our students. You are hashtag awesome. Thank you, Mr. Velas. I'm now going to invite Mrs. Esther Martinez to the podium to celebrate Lorena Callen. Good evening, everyone. Lorena Callen is by nature a shy and a very discreet employee, so she's probably going to have a very difficult time listening to all of this, but I'm glad that she's here. 
Lorena has worked for Calexico Unified since October of 2002. She has held various noteworthy positions which have prepared her for the current one of Human Resources Assistant in the Personnel Commission Office. Lorena is detailed oriented and thorough in her work and has a superb analytical mind. She is the keeper of the classified database and was responsible for putting um, three years worth of data so that the classified employees can get their retros processed by payroll. Lorena is a team player, loyal and has great people skills. She treats everyone with positive attitude. She is invaluable to the district and to me and always displays professionalism in everything she does. She can anticipate the needs of the department and has somehow learned to read my mind because sometimes when I'm about to ask her for help on a project, she gives it over and says, in case you need this. Um, she is always mindful of deadlines and is respected by her peers and is known to be one she can be counted on. When asked why she likes coming to work every morning, she replied, because I like helping others. It is my passion. When I asked her immediate coworkers to describe her with the first things that come to mind, they answered, she is honest, generous, hardworking, caring, and warm-hearted. I think she's an exceptional employee. Congratulations, Lorena, on this recognition. Thank you, Esther. I am now going to invite Mr. Alex Savinia to the podium to celebrate Elizabeth Ruelas. In a second, technology. Okay. Uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I am honored to um, give a bio on my uh, student, uh, student of the month, <laughs> employee of the month uh, um, award, and it is my honor to introduce Elizabeth Ruelas. <laughs> Elizabeth Ruelas has been a Jefferson Tiger for 17 years. Elizabeth attended Jefferson from grades three to sixth grade, that's four years, and then returned in 2002 as a special education instructional aide, where she has been for the past 13 years. Prior to 2002, uh, she worked as a special education teacher at uh, Blanc Charles for 10 years. She has been serving our students for a total of 23 years. Elizabeth is a product of our school district, class of 1992. Ms. Ruelas is a great team player. Ms. Ruelas comes to the rescue with a positive attitude when she is most needed. I can always count on Ms. Ruelas when there is a shortage of subs and when we need extra help with school activities such as student assemblies, etc. Ms. Ruelas was part of our school site council for the past two years and she contributed great ideas to the committee. As a special education instructional aide, I have observed how great she works with her students. Elizabeth Ruelas is well respected and appreciated by all of our Jefferson staff. For this reason, Ms. Ruelas deserves this Employee of the Month Award. Thank you, Ms. Ruelas. Thank you, Mr. Avina. I'm now going to invite Jaime Santos to the podium so that we can celebrate Maria Navarro. Good evening. I'd like to introduce you to Maria Navarro. Maria Navarro has been, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Maria Navarro has been an educator here, uh, well, has been an educator for close to 25 years. And uh, she's been at this district for close to 17 years. Um, she has worked at Jefferson and now we, we have been graced uh, for her to work at Cesar Chavez. And, uh, oops, oops, oops. Technology is not working. Uh, currently, <coughs> you know, sh 
Maria is, has been very, very given of her time. She's very dedicated. Uh, she has gone above and beyond the call of duty. Uh, her, professional, her professionalism and her kindness and that willingness to just give it her all uh, is quite admirable. I just want to thank you, Ms. Navarro, from, from the bottom of all the Lobos' hearts that uh, you totally and completely deserve this acknowledgement for all the good work that you do. Thank you so much. And thank you very much. Thank you. thank you, Mr. Santos. I'm now going to invite Ms. Syria Hurtado to the podium so that we can celebrate Juan C. Dominguez. board members, administration, parents and students, and, and teachers. Mr. Juan Carlos Dominguez has been a Calexico Unified School District employee since 2002. During this time, he has worked five years at Dole, two years at Kennedy, and six years at Blanc Charles. He has taught sixth grade newcomers, fifth and sixth graders, and he is currently teaching fifth grade. He is one of my two ACES coordinators at our school. On top of having a full-time job, he also has work in the evening uh, with adult ed for the last six years. Mr. Dominguez's priority is student achievement. He is always there for students. Whenever he's off from ACES, he still stays behind to help students with their work. He is one of the first ones to get to school and he's one of the last ones to leave. He is always one of the first ones to volunteer for anything new that we have to um, in integrate in our, our school. Regardless of the need, he's, he's always there to support students and teachers. Mr. Dominguez has good communication with parents and with peers. He helps parents by extending his hand to help students academically at home. Mr. Dominguez is always willing to try new things to help his students. He works very well with his colleagues and collaborates across grade levels. He is highly respected by his peers and students. On top of everything, he does for his students. Mr. Dominguez enjoys doing a Sunday UABC radio broadcast um, every Sunday for the last 25 years. On his spare time, um, he likes to spend time with his family. And I tell him, when do you find time? Because you're always here. <laughs> I leave and you're still here. And then on weekends he does this. I don't know when, when he finds time. I greatly admire his service. I am happy to have him as part of my uh, Blanche Charles Elementary School uh, staff. Um, Mr. Dominguez, congratulations, and I wish I could give you more than what you do for our school. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tado. And last but not least, I'm going to invite Gabby Williams to celebrate Alma Flores. Good evening. When I think of Miss Flores, I think of her kindness, I think of her professionalism and flawlessness. I've known Miss Flores for 12 years now, and she is exceptionally kind, professional, and all that she does for her students. And again, the word that always comes to mind when I think of her is she's just flawless in all that she does. Her ability to listen to our students, to offer help, promote a success environment in her class is very unique. And I mean unique because when you first meet Ms. Flores, no offense, she's awesome, but that's why she's here. But when I first met her, the first thought that came to mind is she is in kinder. She, she gives the impression she's in kinder, a kinder teacher. Uh, but she's definitely not uh, in the kinder world, and she does a beautiful job with our high school students. And again, she just uh, comes across very um, delicate, very, at the same time, firm, 
very unique style and again my word when I think of Alma is she's just flawless um, she also displays uh, whatever it takes attitude um, at all times and this attitude of whatever it takes for our students to succeed is passed on and established in her classroom and our students do carry on with each other and when you walk in her classroom it is a not failure is not an option and again whatever it takes for all of you to succeed her dedication contributes to our student success I want to thank you Miss Flores for the hundreds hundreds of lives you have touched inspire and forever have changed congratulations on this recognition very well deserved Thank you, Ms. Williams. And that is uh, item G3, employee recognition. So we are done with employee, with all the recognitions of the night. At this point, we're gonna take a five minute break so we can all enjoy the fabulous cake and coffee that the district provides for uh, students and teachers. So five minutes. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, to item H3 comments from the public they will take any and all comments from the public related to an item on the agenda or any other item of district business that is not on the agenda number one on the list under public comments is John Moreno under public comments good evening board trustees administration members of the audience my name is John Moreno city councilman school administrator proud parent in the district and voice of the Bulldogs. I will try to remove the emotion regarding the Bulldog Aquatic Center at the old Calexico Municipal Pool site. When we talk about the names of athletic facilities on the confines of Calexico High School, we talk about Willis Ward Field, Elmer Belcher Field, Carl Varner Gym, Linda Godfrey Gym, named after people who were directly involved in Calexico High School athletics. Ward was a football player who died as a result of an injury after a game. Belcher and Godfrey were teachers and coaches who were instrumental in building the lives of young men and women on and off the playing field. And Varner was a superintendent who was instrumental in the construction of a new gymnasium on campus. All were given credit because of their contributions to the people and programs they helped establish. We've been having a somewhat sensitive dialogue on what to name the swimming pool. A consideration of the contributions that the late Margarita de Necochea was given and how she was a voice for the community and the many students she helped along the way to further their education and goals and the monies she secured to refurbish the Carnegie Library and that her deeds shouldn't go unnoticed. But in the realm of athletics, she was not as involved. And let me preface this by saying that the, the Necochea Padilla and the Moreno Carrillo families have been friends for over 80 years. Margarita de Necochea was a community activist who led by example and pushed many of us to get involved and to stand up for what we believed in. I believed in her and supported her causes for many years. I worked alongside her when there was discussion of demolishing the Carnegie Library in the 1990s. I stood with her in support of the preservation of this historic building. My opinion is this. There were others in the community who were coaches, teachers, and parents, and who were never considered for the pool naming. And I, should, and I feel we should give credit where credit is due. Many of them volunteered hours so programs at the swimming pool could flourish and become competitive. The Remingtons, especially Tom Remington, and coaches Mike Fearson and Nick Servine were fixtures at the pool. Another very involved family were the Alvarados. Debbie and the late Francis Alvarado spent many a summer supporting the program and the students and the kids of the community. And with, of course, Ray Alvarado, who spent over 35 years as a coach football, basketball, baseball, tennis, and other sports. He was a teacher, 
an athletic director, an administrator, and CIF representative for the glory of Calexico High School. These people are just as deserving of having some consideration. I'm almost finished. But no one has brought their names forward. And in the tradition of Willis Ward, there was a David Navarro, an eight-year-old boy who drowned in the pool in the early 1960s. Yet his family was never mentioned having a lasting tribute in his honor. I have been accused of being callous and abrasive in this ordeal. But like many people in this room, my roots run deep in Calexico. And in addition, my family has been involved in business, education, and politics for many years. And we've always been big cheerleaders for what Calexico is, was, and will be. Mayor June Kim is in favor of naming the pool after Mrs. D, but he was always in opposition to the construction of this pool from the get-go. He did not want to see this development, and now he's showing his support. Norma Aguilar, former board member, I believe jumped the gun when she made promises to name the pool, and she has no authority. Dan Romero, former councilman, has no authority. Mayor June Kim has no authority. I have no authority. A committee should have been formed to come up with possible names. A disservice was done to the Denecochea family by leading them to believe this pool was to be named in, after their dear departed mother without a healthy dialogue from all stakeholders. Only this board of trustees has the authority to name that pool, and I ask the board to take action or provide direction. Finally, I think we should name the Carnegie Library in honor of Margarita, and that would be the most fitting tribute to her work in this community. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Mr. Moreno. Number two on our list tonight is Margarita de Necochea on their pool naming process. Good evening, honorable board members and Calexico citizens. My name is Margarita de Necochea McCollum, daughter of Margarita Padilla de Necochea and Fernando de Necochea, pioneer families of Calexico, California. I am here today to address the community pool naming process that is on today's agenda. I stand united with my family and friends to ensure and support the honorable process of the board policy 7310, the naming of the Calexico City Pool, Margarita de Necochea Aquatic Pool Complex, which was originally intended in honor of our mother, a Mexican-American, American, American, who donated her time and efforts for the betterment of Calexico. Oh, you can't, oh, I'm sorry, you're in here. You can, anyway. you can move. You can move the. Uh, I can. Oh, the I can microphone. move this. I yeah, the microphone. Oh, oh, I see this. Yes. Okay. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. This policy process has been followed for over four and a half years and needs to be honored. I trust that the board has reviewed all of the documentation presented, and a consensus is in the works, so we can have closure at tonight's meeting. There have been setbacks and naysayers such as she encountered with the restoration of the Carnegie Library. But I always remember an inspirational quote my mother used time and time again to inspire students and the community she loved and cared for so much. She loved to quote, Si se puede, a quote from the beloved Cesar Chavez, who led a historical march that took place in Calexico's historical Rockwood Plaza Park and we had the honor of his visit to our family home. I have a beautiful sympathy letter that I brought with me, and uh, I'd just like to quote from it, from Senator Dianne Feinstein. Within the letter, she says, your mother, and I'm quoting, your mother will be remembered for her deep commitment to her community and the residents of Calexico. For 26 years, Margarita made a profound impact on the lives of countless students through her work at the Calexico High School Library. Margarita also made tremendous contributions to her community, working to restore historical buildings and generously contributing to scholarships for local students. As a lifelong Calexico resident, 
Margarita left her mark in the community and will be sorely missed by all those who were fortunate to know her, unquote. Anyway, these remarks paint a very clear picture of my mother. So I want to thank all of the members of the council, the school board, and the Calexico citizens who have supported us during this very stressful time for our family. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thank Jack. you. Next on our list is Gloria de Necochea on their pool naming process. Good evening. My name is Gloria de Necochea. I'm here in the hopes that there will be some kind of agreement or consensus reached tonight regarding the pool name that honors not only the memory of my mother as it was originally named, but also honors the child who won the pool naming contest so that everyone can leave feeling comfortable and honorable. I was born and raised in Calexico and all six brothers and sisters, all of us attended public schools. I grew up because I'm number four out of seven, class of 1965. I grew up at 835 Heber Avenue. My mother was a housewife until I was 18 years old. She literally just stayed home. That was it. Very traditional home. We had chaperones with dates. Everything was very strict. But then when I turned 18, she got a job, her first job, and she was in retail, and she was in heaven, and she would come home and tell us how these people came in, and they couldn't afford this and that, and she helped them figure out something else, and they left happy. Then she got the school job at the school library as a clerk, and boy, she really started changing. By then, I was in my 20s, and I was so impressed because I didn't grow up with a lot of Latina role models. We didn't have any Latino teachers, no principals. Just There just weren't any around. So hearing and seeing this whole evolution, and this is right when feminism started and all kinds of stuff was changing politically and civil rights, very inspirational. Well, she passed away in 2011 unexpectedly, and by then she was living in the house that my grandparents had grown up in across from Rockwood Park. She was le leaving a very different life. She got totally involved in other things in the city. She got involved with the people in the park. What I wanted to say tonight is that a few months after she passed away unexpectedly, and she was 89 years old, so she did have a good long life, my six siblings and I were notified that the Calexico School Board had unanimously voted to name the pool after her. And we were surprised, we were happy, we shared newspaper clippings, it was in the newspaper, the Ivy Press, the Calexico Chronicles, all over the place. And I was excited, as a Mexican-American myself, that now there was going to be a building in Calexico, not just named after my mother, but named after a Mexican-American woman. You know, there's all these men's names all over the place. So I was very excited. And since it happened to be on the school campus, even though it's not just for bulldog kids, it's for kids from the other high school too, and it's for the community. I was excited anyway. Now we never asked for my mother to be honored. We were very touched. My older brother Gordy and my younger sister Michelle have attended the two prior school board meetings because when we learned that the pool's name had been changed, we were so surprised. Nobody had called us. So despite many decades of friendships with people in this room, nobody had called us, nobody told us anything. We were just very confused. So we've tried coming here and coming from Sacramento, from Dallas, from Los Angeles, from San Diego. We've been coming here and trying to share information about my mother and how it wasn't just about writing letters wanting the pool to be rebuilt. It had been about your bylaws saying that you want to name buildings after people who have contributed to the community. So I thank you for addressing this naming issue. And I wanted to tell you ways she got involved that weren't, you know, so high profile and fancy. There's stories about her nobody knows. Because she lived across from the park in her later years, she was always getting involved with people in the park. When we came home for Christmas, we couldn't have our tamales or do anything until we went across the street and we served whoever was in the park. And then she had her favorite homeless people who lived, uh, who stayed in places near the border and another woman who was in the middle of downtown. I'd have to drive her around all over town delivering these plates. Nobody knows those stories. 
Her address book at home is crammed with social workers, city and county agencies, homeless agencies. She found people in the park who were veterans who deserve veteran benefits. She had one blind man end up getting his sight restored. These are the stories we just heard all the time, and to me, they were more exciting and more inspirational than some of the bigger awards. With the high school kids, she got all of us involved in helping them with their personal essays to apply to college, helping inform them about financial aid. When the girls didn't, couldn't afford prom dresses, she was calling all over town, she was calling us, we had to call our friends, everybody had to drag out all their old dresses from when they'd been bridesmaids, stuff like that. So there's a lot that wasn't high profile, that was private. I just wanted to share that with you. And I hope you reach consensus tonight because it has been very stressful. And the last thing I want to say, and this is very hurtful, so my voice is choking. I was told that some of the people who don't want the pool named after her actually said that she would have never let her children go to a public pool because she thought she was too good for that. We all went to the public pool. And anybody who knew my mother, that's just like the craziest thing in the world. So I'm very disappointed that some of the people against her being on the name have this kind of malicious, untrue stories being circulated. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Nkocha. Next on our list is Mike Davis with the student uniforms. Good evening. Uh, Mike Davies, uh, criminal justice instructor at the uh, Colexico High School. Uh, the reason I showed up today is because we've been waiting for quite a while to get our uniforms. We got them uh, actually the day of your last meeting and it was just not enough time to get them all issued out and come and show them to you folks. So these are the uniforms that, uh, that uh, my students will be wearing during the year. The reason we have three different uniforms, uh, Mr. Alegria, the tall one there on the left, uh, he's uh, wearing our Class A uniform, which will be used at uh, different functions. We're dealing with the public. Uh, Ms. D Dominguez here in the middle uh, is wearing our Class B uniform, which is going to be basically for physical training, uh, the handcuffing techniques, uh, takedowns, and all that other fun stuff that we do. And... Uh, um, I'm sorry, the, 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 the class B in the middle is for basically for Fridays for Spirit Day. And uh, Mr. Ponce here at the end, the athletic looking gentleman here, is wearing our class C uniform, uh, which is going to be our PT uniform uh, that we're going to use within class for our uh, defensive tactics and uh, anything else involving physical training. If you can three turn around, uh, go ahead, turn around, guys. Uh, you can see that the, they're. Uh, very well uh, titled and identified, and uh, that's what we wanted. We wanted them to stand out. Uh, if they're working a football game, uh, we wanted to make sure they knew who were, who were they were and where were they were from. You guys can turn and turn around. Yeah, there you go. So uh, we wanted to show you that uh, some of the CCPT uh, funds that we're using, the, the grant that we got this year, is being used and is being used uh, where it's needed. And uh, you'll be seeing a lot more of these uh, students around, around the uh, community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Davis. What is it? Calexico 15. Calexico 15. Thank you. <laughs> no, I got it. Okay, and last but not least on our uh, public comments is Norma Aguilar under the subject of the pool. <coughs> Norma Aguilar, 839 Hebrew Avenue. Um, I almost didn't come today because I was really tired, I had a long day. But I'm glad I did because if there's one thing I cannot, um, I don't want to say that the word tolerate, but it, I, I don't like is being words being put in my mouth. I did not jump the gun. I did not make any promises to anybody. 
I was part of a I was part of the previous board that gave the, the direction based on the recommendation from the pool previous pool committee to to name the pool after Ms. Margarita de Necochea. I did not make any promises and I want that to be clear. Um, and um, I don't understand wh how it has gotten to this point where it f at where to the point where it, to me it feels personal and and th and I don't like that. That, that that it shouldn't be about that um Mrs. De Necochea contributed a lot to the to the community to the school district and that's why her name was proposed in committee if um we're talking about naming it elsewhere that that conversation should have happened before and uh, John did approach me at previously you know saying I said well if you feel that strongly come and, and make it vocalize that didn't happen until just recently so that's where I'm saying um, I'm asking the board to consider that this action has already happened and if there is a compromise that meets um, that meets the needs of everybody. I, I, I'm asking for you guys to in, and, and resolve it and end this because this is really, really shouldn't have gotten to this point. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Aguilar. So that was item H, comments from the public. Item I, consent agenda. All items appearing will be acted upon at one motion without discussion. Is there a motion to approve uh, item I? Uh. Make a motion to approve. Okay, there's a motion by Ms. By Ms. Real, is there a second? I'd like to sec second it, but with discussion, just. Okay, so it uh, do you? There's no discussion. So do you want to well, pull an item? Yeah, and let me pull the items. Oh, say okay. I eight, I nine, and I ten. Huh? I eight, I nine, and I ten. Okay, and it's all going to be the same. I just want to make a comment on that. Okay, so you want to uh, uh, second the motion, but without uh, item I pulling number uh, item I nine, and I. I eight, eight, nine, and ten. Eight, eight, nine, nine, and ten. Okay. I, I eight, nine, and ten. So that the uh, so, so everything else will be approved. Yes. Is there a, so there's a motion and a second. I'll inf if there's no more discussion, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion passes for zero voting in favor. Mr. Real, Mr. Calderon Jr., Mr. Ortega, and myself, Mr. Calderon. Item I eight, Mr. Uh, Calderon Jr. I'm going to cover I-8 through I-10, and all I want to say tonight is that um, all three trips are to Las Vegas, Nevada. In the future, I'd like to see a little more planning. Uh, I know that being from the law enforcement um, family in Imperial County, these courses are offered by many of our agencies in this county. So I'd like to just say that let's cooperate with our law enforcement agencies and maybe we can actually teach our kids really what's going on within our local uh, law enforcement agencies. And I'm talking when we're talking about um, law enforcement, I'm talking about use of force or any other uh, topic that we might be uh, covering in these trainings. And that's all I have. Okay, so because of you pulled three items, we have to approve each yeah. item individually. Yes. Let's so it, uh, is there a motion to approve I motion I to approve I-8. Okay, there's a motion to approve I-8. Is there a second? Second. There's a second, Mr. Ortega. I have no more, uh, no more questions or comments. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes 3 0. Morning in favor of Ms. Real, Mr. Calderon Jr., Mr. Ortega, myself, Mr. Calderon. Uh, I-9. I motion to approve. 
Motion by Mr. Calderon Jr. Is there a second? Second. There's a second by Ms. Real. All those in favor will please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes 4-0. Voting in favor of Ms. Real, Mr. Calderon Jr., and Mr. Ortega, and myself, Mr. Calderon. I-10. Is there a motion? Motion. There's a motion by Mr. Calderon Jr. Is there a second? Second. second. There's a second by Mr. Ortega. If no more questions or concerns, all those in favor please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes 4-0. <laughs> Voting in favor of Ms. Real, Mr. Calderon Jr., Mr. Ortega, myself, Mr. Calderon. So that was uh, the consent agenda. Item J, information items. Item J1, superintendent, superintendent's report. Good evening, trustees. Good evening, audience. I'm going to give a brief superintendent's report in the absence of Ms. Embrys. I'm going to first report that our district enrollment is 9,271 as of October the 19th, 2015. I would also like to congratulate um, or extend the congratulations to the girls' tennis team as they completed their third straight IVL championship on yesterday. So big congratulations to our girls. I would also like to congratulate the boys cross country team who will be in competition today at the Brawley at Brawley and they're looking for their fifth straight league victory. So let's wish them good luck and I'm sure they've done a great job out there in Brawley. I'd also like to congratulate Carlos Ariano. He's a CHS student who has received a scholarship offer from New Mexico State University and he is committed to play baseball next season. So congratulations. Mr. Ariano. Last but not least, I would like to just remind um, the community and the board members that we have a special board meeting um, that's going to be held next Monday, October 26 at 5 p.m. to discuss our facilities. And that's all I have for a superintendent's report this evening. Thank you, Ms. Randall. Item J2, association comments. Uh, by alphabetical order, ACT, is anybody from ACT here? No comments. Okay, no comments from ACT. CSEA? CSEA? No. Nobody from CSEA? Okay, nobody from CSEA? Okay, item J3, pool committee. So I'll give a brief update on the pool committee. Um, I just wanted to inform the board that we met last Thursday to review the rebidded documents um, for our bid packages 1 through 12 and 14. And you'll also see that as item L1 for approval on tonight's agenda. And I want to just let the board know and the community know that our next pool meeting is scheduled for November, our next pool committee meeting is scheduled for November 10th, 2015 here in the boardroom at from 11.45 a.m. to 1 p.m. And that's my update for this evening. Thank you. That was the uh, pool committee insurance committee? Yes, for the, yes, the, the pool, the pool committee meeting, yes. Have we invited citizens of our community to join this meeting? We have, and I've actually had a couple citizens invite themselves and let me know that they will be attending. So, yes, and uh, we're posting our um, meetings on the website um, in addition to our agendas and um, minutes from our last meeting. So there, a there is actually a space on our website. So all citizens are invited to come. If you could um, send me an email or call my office and RSVP because we do provide lunch and we want to make sure that we have enough. Um, so citizens and community members are invited to attend the meeting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so that was pool committee, insurance committee. Who was in the oh, Mr. Gonzalez um, will give us an update on the insurance committee. Good evening, trustees. Uh, we have our initial meeting scheduled with ACT and CSEA for October 28, 2015. So there is no update other than that's our next scheduled meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. When was it again? And that's the date that we had been discussing for a long time, right? For the first initial meeting? Correct. Um, yeah. Uh, both bargaining units were back in session yes. and um, schedule a meeting. So yes, that's yes. our first meeting of the year. Yes, but, and we have been talking about that specific date, right? Correct. Yes. Thank you. So that was the uh, our uh, insurance committee, uh, safety committee. And Mrs. Mer uh, Ramirez is going to give us an update on the safety committee. 
Good evening. We had our initial meeting on October the 20th. On Tuesday, we had 21 members attending. Among the members were teachers, CSEA members, parents, administration. We had our nurse present, uh, management, and we had our uh, fire chief, Fire Chief Mercado attending. Um, during our session, we um, review, reviewed our safety policy, we created our mission statement, and then we established the purpose for our committee. During that, we had good discussions, um, such as respond, first respondents, drills, and including all staff, unifying procedures, making campuses safer in, in regards to ingress and egress, um, including our after school programs uh, in all procedures and updating our safe plans. We reviewed uh, requirements for the comprehensive school safety plans for the site so that members are aware of what those requirements are. We also agreed to meet for the first three months on a monthly basis. The safe plan, the comprehensive safe plans from the sites have to be uploaded or approved by the board by March 1st. So that's why we want to meet monthly. And then after that, we're going to review and see if there's a need to meet monthly. Um, Part of the homework that we gave the members is to go back to the sites and re get a copy of their 2014-15 safe plan so we can review and see if all the requirements are met. And at the same time, try and unify some of the um, procedures that we have in place. We will be meeting again. Our second meeting will be on December 2nd which will be a Wednesday from 1 to 3 p.m. here in our boardroom. And we would like to invite uh, e either one or two board members to be a part of the committee. And that's it for our report. Thank you. Uh, uh, at a later point, we're going to be talking regarding who wants to be who wants to be part of this committee. Uh, per the Brown Act, we can only have two board members at any committee. If we had three, it will be, be it will become an official meeting. So we can only have two two members. And, and that's item L eight on the agenda for this evening. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So that was safety. Thank you, Ms. Amides. That was safety committee. Item J4, update on textbook adoptions. And I'm going to defer that to Mrs. Ramirez as well. Or Ms. Kalunga. And today's Mrs. Kalunga's birthday. Happy birthday, Mrs. Kalunga. <laughs> Good evening, board. Uh, oh. <laughs> well, let's talk about textbooks. <laughs> so good evening, board of trustees, uh, administrators, and uh, community members. Um, as far as our textbook, uh, we are current on our textbook. We have a couple of pending orders um, for uh, CTE. As far as our Williams, we are ready for a second, uh, second visit from ICOE to clear up all those textbooks that we, we were short on those classes that got opened at the beginning of school. So we should have that walk next week. Yeah. Well, Ms. Colunga, the reason that I brought up this item, because I'm the one that brought up this item, was because uh, it concerns me okay. the fact that I went to the high school. Nobody told me. I went to the AP uh, government class, and the books, the books that they're using, they're dated back to 2003. So, uh, regardless of what we or what the law states, and I'm sorry for saying that, define the law, but regardless of what we or what we have done in the past, I think going almost 15 years without uh, buying new books, I think it is a disservice to our kids. And I'm sorry to say this, but uh, the, the, uh, the current president is not even listed as part of the uh, of the government uh, of the government news and that and that book and that concerns me okay okay uh, so again we spend money on everything else uh, yet for whatever reason okay. I have been asking about this and nothing has happened so that's why I brought it up and I want something done and I don't know about the rest of the board but I would like something done about this Okay. Because it's, I think I think it's uh, for the lack of better words, ridiculous that our books are almost 15 years old. Okay, I will get into it. I will talk with Miss Williams tomorrow. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you.
So that was J4. Uh, J5, board reports. These are informational reports by board members. No action is taken. Ms. Real. First of all, uh, good evening to everybody, administrators, and I want to congratulate uh, all the uh, employees who got recognized today, the students. I know everybody's gone. Um, congratulations to them, and I have nothing really to report today. Thank you, Ms. Real. Mr. Calderon, Jr. Good evening, everyone. Uh, first, I'd like to um, kind of piggyback uh, behind Ms. Randall. I'd like to congratulate all our sportsmen and sportswomen out there. I know we would like to congratulate the tennis team, the volleyball team, and the uh, boys cross country team because I'm pretty confident that we're going to win again. So, again, thank you, and thank you to the coaches that are out there every day um, training our kids. Um, the second item that I'd like to address is last week or last meeting Ms. Real mentioned it where we have this um, AR accelerated reader um, reading incentive program going on and this program is actually in seven of our elementary schools and I'd just like to remind all the administrators that we're still in the process of, of having this uh, contest and I hope that you are motivating uh, our students out there to read because I'd like to see their faces in December and be able to uh, award them for their efforts in trying to or reaching their goals in the AR programs. And the reason why this program came about, I attended a couple of trainings um, that opened up my eyes. Um, a little stats is that 66% um, of our students in the country are reading below the grade level. 17 of the students are from California and 17% of of 66 percent. 60 percent of California's fourth graders are reading below the level. And sadly to say that in Calexico, 75 percent of our kids are reading before below the level. That's why these programs, we have to be innovative and try to help our kids because they are our future. And that's why uh, I come to you as administrators, community, that we need to improve this. Because if we don't, we're not doing uh, anything for our kids. And this is tonight, I want you to know that we are here for our kids. And that's the only reason we're here. Um, again, we all know that fourth grade is a very critical grade. Because if they don't read by fourth grade, we've lost them. And what caught my eye the most is that we have groups in Sacramento studying these pipelines because based on these pipelines they're going to start building prisons and i tell you california has 34 prisons right now and we don't need any more prisons we need more scholars out there we need people to come back in calexico and make it what calexico should be um, and again thank you and we're still accepting donations and thank you for those who have already donated. I think that will bring a lot of joy to our kids come December. And I believe our contest ends in December, is it December 12th? Is it, what's the deadline? They start, I know they start in September 8th and they end in, in uh, December. Yeah. All right, and we're gonna be awarding these, uh, these bicycles uh, prior to them going on to the holidays, correct? So again, uh, administrators, I plead with you, uh, and I actually challenge you. I, I hope that your schools are come out the highest, you know. So I, I'm, I'm pleading to you, and I, and I hope that our exams at the end of the year reflect our efforts to try to help our kids. Um, and thank you again, and thank you for the donors that have already donated to us to this cause. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Calderon Jr. Mr. Ortega. Yes. <clears throat> Good evening, and thank you all for coming. Um, I uh, attended a uh, meeting yesterday that was held by the county here in Calexico in regards to the uh, public benefit fund, which is a fund that the uh, solar panel fields pay into, uh, given that whenever a solar panel field is, is built, it displaces uh, agriculture land, which, of course, affects the uh, economic development and so forth. Nevertheless, um, they've generated, as of now, about four and a half million dollars. Um, the meeting yesterday was to explain what the criteria that they will be using for the application process for these funds. 
um, districts, nonprofits, municipalities will be able to apply for uh, for these funds, establishing that there is a benefit that those funds will bring. Um, you know, for the application process will be open at the beginning of the year. Um, unfortunately, there's only $2 million for the whole valley. Uh, nevertheless, I think it'd be worth a shot that if the district uh, were to apply, given the project that is coming up later on in the agenda, that of course we, we need more money for. Um, just wanted to make staff aware that that, uh, that will, uh, I don't have the website right now, but nevertheless, the application will be available online. Thank you, that is it. Thank you, Ms. Ortega. Um, I don't have, I don't really have much to say today. Uh, I've been going around to schools and to uh, sites and uh, I just want to tell everybody that even though sometimes I have my grouch face, they appreciate, don't laugh, that I appreciate, I'm just kidding, that I appreciate everybody's work, okay? As they say, uh, it takes a village to raise a, a child. And this is true for Calexico. Okay, uh, it doesn't matter whether it is Maria Ambriz, the superintendent, or the brand new uh, 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 data analyst that just got hired yesterday. Doesn't really matter who that is. Okay, well, educating our students, educating our kids, it takes everybody. Okay, so thank you everybody for what you guys do. For from principals, from the to directors, uh, to the. Uh, uh, cafeteria ladies or workers my mom was a cafeteria lady for 10 years so and i know firsthand what it what it means to uh, have a job like that and to be able to come back uh, after two three hours and be all excited because you did something for for students okay um, sometimes we honestly we lose track of what we do we get it we get uh, entangled in politics we get entangled in uh, what about this, uh, monies, uh, this and that. And this is not why I got elected. This is not why we're here. This is to benefit our students. And it should the students should be not the number one priority, but the students should be the only priority. Okay? It should be the only priority in our minds. As educators, uh, as politicians, it should be the only priority. So, like I, like I said, uh, again, thank you from the bottom of my heart because when I go to the schools, everybody is willing to uh, help with whatever we need. So, thank you. And those are my comments. Okay. Glasses back on. That was J5. Item K, discuss, discussion, possible actions. K1 pool naming process <coughs> at the last at the last board meeting uh, we had discussed what was it that was done and what was it that was missing and uh, a lot of backup information was given and I don't know if, if the backup information is still here uh, it should be here okay uh, the internet is really slow okay there it is um, I personally came and worked with Janet and, uh, and other office staff to make sure that what we were given was correct. And again, the office staff was 100% correct. They were 100% right. Um, what was given to us, it was, was the right information. Yes, there were uh, proclamations uh, about how Mrs. De Necochea was to be commended for her work. However, that was the last, that was the only, uh, th that was the only thing or the only proclamation that we found. There was nothing that we found regarding uh, uh, the previous board having voted on naming the pool, the Margarita de Necochea uh, uh, complex or swimming pool. Um, we went back as long as 2011 and there is nothing. We looked, we uh, Janet looked, Adria looked, I looked, there's nothing. There's no agenda items, not even from the previous boards. Uh, and, and we have, uh, well, we can go back before April of that year because that's, that's when the earthquake happened. 
So that would have been that would have, that would have been the starting point. So, um, like I said before, what we were gonna make sure that uh, that we did the right thing as far as looking and making sure that there was nothing else that needed to be found, that there was no other information that needed to be presented. And again, the office staff was right when they gave me that report that there was nothing else to be presented. There's no other board actions. Uh, we looked for possible minutes from uh, previous pool committees. There's nothing. There's no minutes. There's nothing that, that states that the pool was going to, or that somebody, or that the board had taken action on naming the pool the Margarita de Necochea pool. So I just wanted to state that. Also, um, just to clarify, just to clarify for some of the comments that, that were made today. Uh, yes, our board policy 7310 uh, uh, that uh, um, talks about facilities, it does state that the Board of Education shall name schools or the individuals' buildings in recognition of number one, individuals living or deceased who have made outstanding contributions. Number two, individuals living or deceased who have made contributions of, to of state, national, or worldwide significance, but also of number three, the geographic area in which the school or building is located. In this case, the Calexico Aquatic Center. It talks about Calexico. It talks about our town. Okay, so I just wanted to make that they made that clear because we are by doing this by by naming or by the proposed name, we are not violating any laws. Okay, so and I just I just wanted to make that clear. So um, that is that is my that is my uh, my report. That's not my take on anything. That is, that is just my report because I did say the last time that uh, that I was speaking to you on behalf of this item that I will come back on the next board meeting and report any any findings, any new findings. And uh, there's nothing there's nothing uh, new. There's there's no other findings uh, to be reported at this time because there's nothing that. Uh, that uh, we uh, that uh, that we found. Hold on, uh, we're gonna open the discussion f uh, to the board members. Okay. With that said, I know in the last meeting we did discuss to come into agreement as far as finding a name to name for the swimming pool. And all I want to add to that, even though uh, we did our homework, we looked for these minutes, we weren't able to find anything. I don't see how the district would have allowed for the presentations, for the grant writing, to have Margarita and Ecochea on everything if there wasn't something said that the pool was gonna be named Margarita and Ecochea. Mm -hmm. And I think we're all in agreement with that, that there's no way that the district would have allowed several presentations, the board meeting clip that we saw, the presentation was Margarita and Ecochea swimming pool. So with that said, even though there's no minutes, um, I know the family has emailed all of us and we have, well, at least with me, we have come to an agreement where we are going to respect both the family and the student who won the competition. And I think the name that flows the most would be Margarita Necochea Aquatic Center. No, Aquatic Margarita Necochea Bulldog Aquatic Center. Um, and that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Al. Mr. Calderon Jr. I'll reserve my comment to last. Thank you, Mr. Calderon Jr. Mr. Ortega. <coughs> Well, at the last meeting, I indicated that I was open to a compromise to put an end to this. Um, I do understand that all of the, uh, the plans and everything else that's been presented throughout the process of this pool has had Margarita Nicochea, which seems to imply, and, that, and there is an intent, that that was the name that was intended for the pool. Again, um, I said I was open to a compromise. It seems that the name you've just mentioned might be the, the solution to this issue? I believe so because we're bringing both names into one and okay. I think they flow uh, as far as naming it all, you know, one name. Okay. And I think it's that's the compromise that would benefit the family and would benefit the student the as well for the competition. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Ms. Real and Mr. Ortega. Um, and I will stand, uh, I will, I will, I will keep my uh, m uh, my stand on the fact that although this is a political 
office. I am not a politician. Mr. Weller, you might correct me, but uh, I don't care. Um, uh, I am not a politician. I got elected to serve kids, the students, and again, the students are my only priority, and they will be my only priority. That's why I got elected to do this job. Um, with that said, There's something, there has to be something uh, that uh, previous boards did in order for that, uh, uh, those plans to have the Margarita de Necochea name. I'm not implying that the board took a previous action. It could have just been a direction or it could have been just the superintendent that uh, gave direction and the board went with that. So whatever this board decides to do, uh, I just want to make sure that the student doesn't feel like we sold out that student's work for a few political votes. So, and that is not because that's not going to be the case here. That's all I have to say about that. Mr. Calderon. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, not only do I come to you as a board member, but I come to you as a parent, as a citizen of this Calexico for almost, what, what I'm 53 years old. The only time I left was when I went to college. But I've been here. I've raised my family here. And only because I love Calexico. I think most of you have mentioned that we live Calexico. We want the best from Calexico. But one thing that I can tell you that I also come from a pioneer family and those that also work for the district. And what they have taught me is do the right thing. And tonight I can tell you, I was one to ask for any proof of whether, where, how this name came about. And no disrespect to the family because I feel for you. But if it's not in writing, it never happened. We've had many people come up here before us saying that this happened, this happened, but there's nothing in writing to confirm that. We're here for our kids, and I mentioned it earlier when I, was, when I made my statement, we're here for our kids. This girl won, or young lady won this contest. This contest was well publicized in the internet, through the school system, and through everything. And no one said anything. Not until recently that people have come up forward, have been coming up forward, forward and saying that this was named on, um, on behalf of Ms. Ms. Nicochea. But again, I, I stress, we have put a lot of hours in looking for these minutes to confirm this allegation, and there's nothing. And I know that I'm not no one to sit here and, and blame other boards because years from now they're probably going to say, Hey, Calderon was there, he voted for it, and so forth, and I won't be able to say anything. But I can only vote on what's here tonight, and that is that there is no proof of this. And again, m my heart's to the family, but I can only go with what's in front of me. And tonight, I, I propose that we go with the, continue with the Bulldog Aquatic Center. That is my take. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Calderon Jr. Um, and uh, unfortunately, Ms. Uno is not here tonight uh, to make a, to uh, make a proposal or to speak her mind. And um, I was counting on her being here tonight, but she's not. She had to, uh, for other reasons, she had, she could not be here tonight. So. Uh, well. We have a couple options because we don't. This is this is only action or possible uh, discussion or possible action. So we don't really need to take action at this point. So we could just leave it as as that. Table table the item and wait until Miss uh, Suno comes back. I want to make a motion to pass this to have some closure already. Move forward with the swimming pool. So I want to make a motion to pass Margarita Necochea Bulldog Aquatic Center. Oh. 
Hold on. Um, Mr. Weiler. I, I recognize the parliamentary procedure of, of making a motion. Um, I watched the video from last meeting, and I'm aware of discussions from prior meetings. Um, and I see that there is still somewhat of a division on the board. And as you mentioned, Ms. Zuno is not here. Um, so you may not get a majority vote anyway. What I would suggest as an option, uh, one of many options, is that this be placed on the next agenda with at least two written resolutions as backup materials so that the community actually sees what the names are that are being proposed. Mr. Calderon Jr. presented a name, Ms. Real presented a name. There, there can be two, mo two resolutions as backup materials. Um, and that allows the public to come forward and make whatever comments they want for a final time. And then you have a written resolution, no question about the Brown Act issues, um, and you vote next meeting. Yeah, that's one option. Or you can wait for a second on this, this motion and, and vote on it tonight. Okay, so there's a, there's a motion on the floor by Ms. Real. Is there a second? Second. So there's a second by Mr. Ortega. If no for the, uh, further questions or concerns, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. No. So we have a tie. So there's, so what happens? Well, I would I motion to take into consideration what the attorney just told us. Let the community decide. Those that live in Calexico and those who are here in Calexico decide. We'll publicize it, bring it back, and then we'll go from there. That's what I recommend. Okay, so we have a 2-2 vote, so that means that the, uh, hold on, Ms. Al, so that we have a 2-2 two -two motion, 2-2 uh, two -two vote, so that means that the motion that doesn't pass, right? Correct. You need a majority of a the majority. board. You need three votes to okay. pass it. Okay. So, so now at this point, Mr. Calderon, do you, uh, is that your motion? My motion is that we take the attorney's advice and bring it back next meeting, and then we can the community can decide if they want to come up and voice their opinions, and then we'll vote. So and Letty might make it the next time, and we can um, actually take care of it next week or next board meeting the which next would be board meeting. the next the next regular board yeah. meeting yes november the 12th the 12th mm -hmm. okay okay and just so that i'm clear for direction um um we will provide a resolution that has the suggested name from mrs rael and then the um bulldog aquatic center so there will be two separate resolutions and the board will take action at that time yes on one and the uh, i would suggest and i work with ms burgos on this that the public agenda uh, the, the the outline um, that the public sees initially uh, be more verbal in terms of uh, these are the, uh, two of the, the names options. but there may be other names as well okay. to allow the public full opportunity to, to have one final out uh, one final uh, comment session so there's a motion on the floor by mr. Calderon jr. to have the two uh, the the, uh, the two okay. the two names suggested names uh, for up uh, for discussion and action and action I'm sorry uh, the next board meeting is there a second second there's a second by Mr. Ortega any more any questions or concerns yes there's no two names the word it's one name we're combining two names to one what, I don't understand no. what two names were no yours combines Margarita Nicocha Aquatic Bulldog Center and mine I'm just saying Bulldog Aquatic Center like the young lady won the contest there's, there's two actually the uh, the uh, the original the or the uh, uh, the the student that won the contest named it the Calexico Bulldog Aquatic Complex okay that was the well, name so is that what you want? yes I, I stand corrected yeah it, it okay. is you're right so, and Ms. Real you are suggesting the Margarita de Necochea Bulldog Aquatic Center is that what you're suggesting yes okay so those two so get that Janet Okay, so we have a motion on the floor, and we have a second by Mr. Ortega. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 No. 
Now, uh, motion passes 3-1. Uh, voting in favor are Ms. Uh, Cal Mr. Calderon Jr., Mr. Ortega, myself, Mr. Calderon, and voting against that is Ms. Real. Motion passes 3-1. Okay, um, item L, action items, conservation and action approval of the following items. Item L1, approval of bid recommendation for pool construction services for bid packages 1 to 12 and 14. My. On the agenda this evening, um, what you have before you are recommendations from the pool committee um, that um, were given at our last pool meeting for the bid packages 1 through 12 and 14. These were the bid packages that were rebid, and um, we're making the recommendations for those bid packages for um, the different um, services. And if you need further information, Mr. Jimmy Sanders, our architect, is here present. Uh, for bid package one for the earthwork, the recommendation is to approve pyramid construction for a uh, contract of 565,438. For bid package number two, for concrete, building and site, the recommendation is for Team C construction. For bid package. Excuse me, Ms. Brandon, I have yes. a question. Can we go back to the earthwork? Sure. I know there's differences of 15,000, but I, I kind of figured it out that if you add both, the, um, the pyramid is cheaper than the top one. But my question to Mr. Sanders is, what are we getting for 32,000 and 48? 48. Um, and the add alt. Yes, because that's an added, <coughs> an added uh, cost there. But I think I was told that it was a slab for a possible, for the possible rec rooms that were not, can you? I'll let Mr. Sanders. Um, Go ahead, sure. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, we're leaving now. We came here to discuss the pool that's been going on for four and a half years and it's coming back to square one. So thank you very much. It's just the intention of the board to totally disregard all the respectful, honorable things and service that my mother has done for Alexico. It's a sad day. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, alternate add 1.1 is for the earthwork for building B, uh, the multi-purpose uh, classroom building. And so <clears throat> in, uh, in summary or a better description of that, it, the the soils report required us to to dig down or to provide a minimum of uh, three feet of granular material non-expansive material so we have to dig out the clay and bring in non-expansive material and so if there's any possibility that, that in the future that you would uh, build uh, this uh, this multi-purpose classroom building we were rec we were recommending that you would go ahead and install the the pad for that building and the reason is is because uh, we're going to be putting in um, mm. all of the all of the utilities mm. stud stub to that area which includes your water line your sewer lines your your conduit for your electrical line so everything gets stubbed out to that area and so we thought it would be uh, very wise to to uh, install this granular pad so that for two reasons one you wouldn't be interrupting any of those utilities and two you wouldn't be having to come back in and dig this this a big three foot deep hole and then backfill it with granular material. So for $32,000, your, your earth is prepped to the point to where you could at that point come back and, and install your foundation on, on top of that, uh, that granular pad. So you're talking, it's gonna be, it's gonna have footing and everything just ready to 
built on top of no it. no oh. there wouldn't be any any concrete uh, footings it would just be the granular pad we call it an engineered pad mm -hmm. so so it'd just be a matter of taking out the the uh, expansive clay material and then bringing back in the granular material and and compacting that uh, as it's as it's placed in the in the hole okay all right For, Mr. Oh, Mr. Uh, Sanders, yeah, you. I know this is going to come up later today, and we're going to go item by item. But let me just ask you, and you should know this because you, well, you are the person that we trusted with this uh, with this uh, project. Um, are we seeing? Are we seeing any um, any savings with uh, with the with the rebidding of of everything else that we've done uh, of, of packages one to twelve and fourteen? Uh, you yes, you are when when you when you divide up uh, or let me let me uh, ex uh, uh, provide a better explanation. When you look at the the original bid, it included. Uh, all of the work that's currently broke up. Okay, so the original bid just had lump sums for the entire project. Now we've broke that up into a base bid one and a base bid two and some alternate ads and deducts. So when you add those those items up, uh, uh, many of those bid packages actually come in a little bit less than they did uh, the first the first bid. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, do you have a ballpark idea how much are we saving? Roughly, um, a b well, if if you if you were to add everything up, both the base bid one and the base bid two, uh, I, I I did not do that, but just in uh, uh, just a real rough estimate, I, I would say it would be in the neighborhood of of a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars at the most. However, where you're getting your savings from is the option that you have at this point to to reduce uh, part of the project scope, which is for the building B or the multi-purpose classroom building. So when we take that portion of the project out, well, now we have a substantial savings. Well, I, I think what Mr. Calderon is saying is that we, we removed the multi-purpose rooms that were way out in left field, $2, $2 million. What he's asking is that now that we've rebid it again, what's the savings? I believe that's yes. What because More I mean, we're not we're not doing we're constructing the multi-purpose room. No. Right. So uh, in the previous project, we were about two million dollars over, and now we are. Um, give you the the uh, exact amount. We're um, two hundred seventeen thousand uh, dollars over the budget. So, so basically, in other words, one point eight. So we by. Basically, what you're saying is by not const doing construction on those multi-purpose rooms, we're saving about 1.8. Well, I, I believe uh, I believe it's uh, more like 1.6. 1.6. Okay. Yes. So we're saving some money. Correct. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. That what that's my question. Mm -hmm. Oh. Well, hold on. We need to. Well, we're in the middle of an item, so. Okay, go ahead, Ms. Aguilar. Norma Aguilar, 839 Hebrew Avenue. Mr. Sanders, um, it was my understanding when when we originally started planning for the pool that um, Dwight, it was we were considering doing it in phases, and which is seems like it's that's how it's going to be done. Correct. So if if they're doing and and by my understanding when we were on the board was that by um, cons constructing the first two phases that would make us eligible to get in line for new construction funding. Um, and that was something that was brought up by Mr. Martinez. I, Mr. Martinez has left, and I don't know if anybody has informed the board that that was the intention, to get funding from the state to be able to build that third building. 
and I wanted to share that with you. Did you recall that conversation? Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Aguilar. And since we are on the, uh, on the subject, I have Mr. Armando Real under public comments. Thank you, Ms. Aguilar. Good evening, Armando Real, um, City yeah. Councilman, City of Calexico. Um, I just come something that has nothing to do with the pool, but uh, before I leave, I just wanted to um, let everybody know that um, we're having our groundbreaking for the new port of entry on the 12th of November. I think it's something that's going to impact not just the city of Calexico, but the schools, um, the whole region, um, the county. And uh, I just want to invite um, board members, everybody here. I think it's it's something extremely um, important for us, and I wanted to let you guys know that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Real. And would you, if you would please have your mayor or your city manager send us invitations? Our budget is going That was an invitation. <laughs> <laughs> nice. We'll send you a proper invitation. Yeah. <laughs> Tacky, but nice. That's how the city does business. Oh, well. Okay, so what are we at? What this? My Still with the full bids. Right, On sure. the bids. So that was bid number one? So that was number one, um, which would be the pyramid construction. Bid package number two for concrete building and site would go to Team C Construction. Bid package number three. So we're, I don't know, are we okay with the pad? What? The additional, so yeah. and, and the that was what that's, that's, that's the recommendation from the committee okay. is to right. go with okay. the to get okay. the earthwork and All that right. stuff done. Putting you on video, okay. so make sure that's the recommendation of the committee, sure. yeah, okay. the pool committee. Yes, right. okay. You. And so, for bid package number three for structural steel, miscellaneous metals, and ladders, um, that would be awarded to White's Steel. Bid package number four concrete, unit masonry, rebar, and grout. That bid would go to um, Haxton Masonry Incorporated. Bid package number five for PVC roofing, accessories, and sheet metal. That would go to commercial and industrial roofing. Bid package number six for doors, windows, hardware specialties. Oak View Construction. Bid package number seven for metal framing, drywall, and finishes. Oak View Construction for bid package number eight, floor finishes, ceramic tile, and blinds, Pro Spectra Contract Flooring for bid package number nine, for casework and finished carpentry, Spooners Woodworks Incorporated for bid package ten, for plumbing, Interpipe Contracting Incorporated for bid package eleven. HVAC and controls, R&K air conditioning. For bid package 12, electrical, fire alarm, clocks, communications, data, and AV equipment, world bridge technology. And for bid package 14, fire sprinklers, industrial fire sprinkler company incorporated. And those are the recommendations from the committee. Thank you, Ms. Randall. I, I have one question for, um, Mr. Sanders, mm -hmm. Wh which is a company that is doing the plastering inside the pool and also the cool deck? Because I, I mean, I don't, I didn't, I wasn't able to find it here. <coughs> the, the plastering inside the pool, <coughs> excuse me, is done by California Commercial Pool under bid package 13. So 13? that's been awarded. So that's it. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. And, and because, and the only reason I'm asking is because in our, our visit to uh, Calipatria, we were told that that was very critical. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm asking, making sure that it's actually a pool company that's doing it and not someone else that does have no, has no experience yeah. in the pool business. Right. And you, the second part of your question was the, I believe it was the concrete decks? Yes, sir. And so the concrete decks are in, in uh, bid package number two, which, yes. would, which is proposed for Team C. No? No, no. Are we done with? That's all I have for my yeah. recommendations. All right.
and I recommend um, on behalf of the committee that um, these bid packages 1 through 12 and 14 are approved and that's my recommendation this evening and when you went to the um, at the pool committee uh, what you just said it everybody was in agreement on this that is correct thank you so we have item L1, approval of bid recommendations for pool construction services for bid packages 1 through 12 and 14. Is there a motion for this? So moved. Motion. There's a move. There's a motion by Mr. Ortega. Second. Is there, is there a, there's a second. There's a second by Mr. Calderon Jr. If no more questions or concerns, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes 4-0. Voting in favor, Mr. Real, Mr. Calderon Jr., Mr. Ortega, myself, Mr. Calderon. Sorry. Item L2. Matt, hold on. Before we go, uh, you know, public citizens, employees, I, I'd like to share something with you. And this is, this is the vision that I have for Calexico because here we, we say that we don't believe in Calexico. We don't care. I want to show you what I want to see Calexico to be in the future. Can you go ahead? and It's, it's a quick two-minute video. Oh, virus, doesn't it? It's two minutes. That's I get not a it. virus, does it? No. It, it <laughs> sabotaging your... Yeah. Well, Priscilla and I, we don't get viruses. Yeah.
this is north from us here. If they can do it, we also can do it. And I think that's our future. If we all work as a team and get it done. And that's how I wanted to show you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Calderon Jr. There we go. So, item L L2, Memo of Understanding between T Calexico Unified School District and Imperial County Children and Families First Commission on Special Programs for School Readiness for Fiscal Year 2015-16 uh, for Dual and Jefferson Schools. My. I'm actually going to defer this to Mrs. Ramirez. She's going to speak to this item. Good evening again. Um, for the past five years, they have hosted the health fair at Kennedy Gardens and Mains. So th this year, they're going to be moving their health fairs to Jefferson and Duel. And what it is, is this: they bring 20 agencies, um, and they set up outside of the school, after school, they provide us with an $800 check that we buy snacks for all the individuals that come onto the to the um, sites. They have, uh, the agencies have, they take blood pressure, they do diabetes screening, nutrition sessions, resource booths. They also give f uh, free car boosters. They have cars come in and if their seats are, are not appropriate, they will provide a, a brand new seat to the uh, parents that bring in their cars. And how are we advising our parents that this is taking place? We, they provide the flyers, and then we have incentives, we have raffle tickets. Part of the $800 is to buy raffles for the parents, too. And we have bikes and MP3 players, we buy toasters, we buy all kinds of stuff to raffle. And also, if you need um, to purchase, for example, shades, tables, or ice chests, you buy them, and then you can actually keep them at your sites. If no other questions, I move to approve. There's a motion by Mr. by Mr. Calderon Jr. Second. There's a second. There's a second by Ms. Real. In no further questions, all those in favor will please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes for zero. Voting in favor of Ms. Real, Mr. Calderon Jr., Mr. Ortega, myself, Mr. Calderon. Item L3, proposal for supplemental education services, SES, management software, easy SES 2015-2016. Ms. Randall. Ms. Kalunga is going to speak to this item. Good evening again, board. This is uh, Christine Colunga, Director of Academic Services. Um, what you have before you is the proposal for us to purchase the Easy SES software, which is how we are able to um, access the database of the state providers, and we have about 25. Um, and it helps us assign the students to the providers. It also allows us the process for invoicing those providers and to communicate with the providers as far as the measuring tools of the academic tutoring. Do we receive any funding for these programs? We do. Actually, we uh, receive the funding from Title I. So really, what what we we're going to use part of that is is to pay for this service. Yeah, because it's pretty software. expensive, but uh, if Title One's paying for it, okay, mm -hmm. it's not from the general fund. Mm -mm. No. Okay. no, it's all Title One. Okay, good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Seven hundred. Any more questions? Seven hundred thousand. No, but it's in the three years. Chosen. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I motion to approve. There's a motion on the floor by Mr. Calderon Jr. Is there a second? Second. There's a second by Ms. Real. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes 4-0. Uh, uh, voting in favor of Ms. Real, Mr. Calderon Jr., Mr. Ortega, myself, Mr. Calderon. Item L4, Supplemental Title I Educational Services Contract. Whoa. I'm also going to let Ms. Kalunga speak to this item as well. <laughs> Happy birthday again. <laughs> Happy birthday. Mm -hmm. um, attached is the contract 
actually that we are going to be using those Title I funds to provide for the, the tutoring service for over 690 students. And so it's the, the funding to pay for the services to the providers, so they're going to invoice us. Um, but it's also to pay for the postage because the program improvement letters had to go out to all the, the parents. So those are the those are the costs in there. Ms. Colunga, and um, and this is this is nice, and we need this for to provide for our students. Uh, however, uh, what are so what what then when when this happens? So how do we measure what we did? How do we measure uh, the uh, the benefit of these programs to our students? Well, the the students are selected based on SBAC scores. And these are our students that did not meet the standard. Mm -hmm. So uh, what happens is all the providers give an entry-level assessment and mm -hmm. then an ending assessment. Okay. So based, based on the, the tutoring time that they have, so we see whether there has been growth. Thank you. Yes, it would be it would be nice if maybe at the beginning of the next school year, if we could have a, just a quick rundown of what happened and uh, what the uh, these students, what have because but I'm pretty sure uh, we label our student, not label, but we uh, tag our students uh, in order to be able to offer the services. So, uh, so it would be nice if we could have something like that to see what kind of growth those students showed uh, because of these services. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Colunga, I, yes, I have another question. Okay. How do the parents know that these um, 20 services are available for their kids? We have fairs, the SES, the supplemental uh, services, we have fairs, and we had three of them this year. We had one September 23rd, and October 1st was mm -hmm. for all of our elementary sites, and then on October 7th, we had uh, the fair for the secondary. But really, any, any of our parents could register or fill out an application during that time of those three fairs. Okay, um, and that's good, but I'd like to see if we could recommend that we can send a flyer to the parents kind of reinforce it uh, I, I believe flyers went out they went from the schools not, nowadays work and can't make fairs and so forth so I think uh, that would be another measure to be able to let them know that these 20 programs are available for their children mm -hmm. good evening Claudia Montaño director of uh, state and federal projects just to clarify Mr. Calderon it is a re federal requirement that we send out notices okay to all students and we're at the point in program improvement in this district where every single student received a notification of these fairs. Every year we are required to provide them certain information and part of it is the, that the dates of the fair. Okay. Thank you. So there we have item L4 in front of us. Is there a motion, motion. to approve? There's a motion by Mr. Calderon Jr. Is there a second? Second. There's a second by Mr. Ortega. If no further questions, all those in favor will be signified by saying aye. 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 Motion passes 4 0. Ms. Real, Mr. Calderon Jr., myself, and Mr. Ortega uh, voted in favor. Item L5 approval to seek proposal for installation of food services for walk in freezers and refrigerators. I'll speak briefly to this. Sure. As a part of um, our spending plan with um, CDE for food services, we purchased some walk-in freezers. At this point in time, we need uh, some additional support to install those walk-in freezers. And we are, we, as in the food service department, is requesting that the board give us permission to go out and get proposals for installation of these um, freezers. They're big walk-in freezers, and unfortunately, um, with the amount of work that our current staff um, does on a day-to-day -day basis, they don't, we don't have the manpower to have them do the installation, and we need to seek outside proposals to install these freezers. Uh, I have a few questions on this. Sure. Where are these uh, walk-in free, uh, freezers going to be installed? What sites? Mr. Venegas, I'm going to have to defer that question to you. And the second question I have is that we purchased a lot of equipment for the uh, our kitchens, and I want to know if where we're at with the installation of this new equipment. So I can speak on a little equipment as I've done some of my site visits. I can guarantee you that there are brand new tilting skillets um, in the main kitchen in Willie Moreno. I can assure you that there are a lot of new equipment that has been, uh, been installed in the district. I've seen new ovens. I've seen quite a bit of new equipment um, that has been installed. Um, but I'm sure Mr. Venegas can speak a little bit. He can give you a little bit more details um, than that. 
and I can say that the food service department has a pantry that I am very jealous of. Um, I could cook up a whole lot of stuff oh, out of yeah. that pantry. I, I mean, my thing is to work smarter, not harder. Oh, yeah. You I know, wish I had a tilting so. skillet at home. I yeah. could guarantee you that. Gilbert Venegas, uh, Director of Food Services. Um, the walk-in refrigerators and walk-in freezers, uh, there's going to be uh, two, uh, there's going to be one walk-in freezer, one walk-in refrigerator installed at uh, Calexico High School, main campus. There's going to be uh, a, a walk-in freezer, walk-in refrigerator installed at uh, Kennedy Gardens. And there's going to be uh, uh, two walk-in freezers, wa one walk-in refrigerator installed at Willy Moreno. And then there will finally be uh, three walk-in freezers, two walk-in refrigerators installed at De Anza. And uh, for a total of uh, five walk-in refrigerators and seven walk-in freezers. Okay. The last, and this is just a request, that before you make a decision where you're going to install them, that you consult with the site principals to make sure that that's the appropriate <laughs> site for these. Yes, sir. Because I don't know how big they are, but I mean, I imagine they're at least, what, 10 by 10? 10 by 14, I believe. All right, well, yeah. So yeah. they're pretty big, and we don't want to create blind sides or anything. Yes, sir. So that's critical. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I have. Anybody that's else? On. Thank you, Mr. Venegas. Okay. Uh, we have item uh, L5 in front of us. Is there a motion to approve? Motion. There's a motion by Mr. Calderon Jr. Is there a second? Second. There's a second by Mr. Ortega. In no further questions, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes 4 0. Voting in favor of Ms. Real, Mr. Calderon Jr., Mr. Ortega, myself, Mr. Calderon. Item L6 approval of purchasing two student buses, two student school buses from A to Z bus sales. So this item back in September, the board did give um, the MNO department the permission to move forward um, with the piggyback bid. And um, we received the, the contract or the agreement from AZ Bus. It's been reviewed by our legal. And this is approving the district to go ahead and order those buses um, at the cost totally of um, 347468 dollars and we are looking to um, probably do a, if, if approved at this moment, we'll do a requisition tomorrow. Uh, there is a little bit of a, a time frame, and we are expecting delivery of these buses by, I believe, March of 2016. Um, we certainly want to um, have this recommendation approved tonight because we were told that um, LA Unified is um, ordering 100 buses, which means we would not receive our buses until about December of 2016. So we're very excited and the recommendation um, from myself and from Mr. Nielsen is that the board approve the purchase of these two buses. So moved. There's a motion by Mr. Calderon Jr. Is there a second? Second. Sorry. There's a second by Ms. Real. And no further questions. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes 4 0. Voting in favor of Ms. Real, Mr. Calderon Jr., Mr. Ortega, myself, Mr. Calderon. Item L7, denial of claim. Richard Luna versus Calexico Unified School District. Good evening. <laughs> Birthday, too. No, I'm kidding. Um, so, um, um, a bus? So, um, standard protocol is mm -hmm. that um, all of these um, claims that are that exceed $500 need to be rejected by our board and sent to our insurance company for further investigation and it will be handled through our insurance so this mm -hmm. is uh, my recommendation that we reject this claim and defer it to our insurance company so moved there's a motion by Mr. Calderon Jr. to a second. Second. There's a second by Mr. Ortega. You know, for the questions, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes for zero. We're in favor of Ms. Real, Mr. Calderon Jr., Mr. Ortega, and myself, Mr. Calderon. Item L8, appointment of board members, of two board members to the safety committee. Uh, Ms. Randall. At this time, uh, the board can discuss um, which two members they would like to be a participant in the safety committee. Um, that committee is chaired by or spearheaded by Mrs. Elisa Ramirez and along with our parents, um, staff, teachers, classified members. And um, it's important as you all 
um, want to convey that message of safety district wide it's important that um, that you all or two of you sit on the committee and provide input and insight um, to the committee so um, there can be a discussion held now and you can make a recommendation or um, decide who would you like to have sit on that committee it could be one or two board members you know since I brought this item forward I'm volunteering for this I but I, I mean I don't know if anyone else would like to join me but I can tell you that December 2nd I won't be here so the first meeting I'm gonna miss. <laughs> yeah. oh that's right we all gonna be in a train oh is it C oh is that CSB CSBA. CSBA. okay I also want to go ahead and volunteer myself to be part of the safety committee Good choice. Okay. Okay. Good choice. Yes. The two movies. Yeah. Okay. So, so if I heard correctly. So it's Mr. Calderon Jr. and Ms. Priscilla yes. Real. Uh, uh, is there a motion to? Is there a motion to approve Mr. Mr. Calderon Jr. and Ms. Priscilla Real to the safety committee? Motion to approve. There's a motion by Mr. Ortega. There's a second. I second that. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes 4-0. Uh, voting in favor of Ms. Real, Mr. Calderon Jr., Mr. Ortega, and myself, Mr. Calderon. Item L9. Uh, first reading of revised sports policy 5148.2 before and after before after school programs and administrative regulations 5148.2 before after school programs. Uh, Ms. Randall? So I'm going to let Mrs. Brisa Price, Huerta Price, come to the podium and give us a little information on this item. Good evening, Brisa Huerta Price, the ACES Assets Coordinator for the district. Um, when I first came on board in July, I was it was brought to my attention a couple of the issue ongoing issues with our after school programs, <laughs> both in ACES and Assets. And so one of the recommendations from the CDE consultants and also from the um, Region 9 Technical Assistance Center was to review our policies and kind of get them all in line. And if you look at the, um, the changes that I proposed, really they are to be a little bit more specific. Um, the policy lists the superintendent or designee as a person that kind of oversees the program and does a couple of the things that uh, are listed on here. And so the recommendation was to make it more um, specific. So I put either site coordinator or coordinator as needed. Also references to the before school program were struck out. We don't have an after before school program. And it's very unlikely that we do since we would have to start the program at 6 in the morning. Um, and so far, we don't have that interest. Um, so those are some of the recommendations, if you have any questions. And I think uh, when I when I went over these, uh, these recommendations, I think they make sense. At first, I had a couple of questions, but they do make sense after, uh, after you go through them. Board members, do we have any questions, concerns, doubts? Oh, and one thing that was added to this policy is um, on the second page is that the district will ensure records for the after school program be maintained for five years after the grant ends as per program guidelines. Mm -hmm. As I'm going through the FPM process, that's one of the requirements that um, we have a policy in place. And so I went ahead and I added that to our after school, before and after school programs policy. I'm, I'm okay. Just a comment that yes. again, back in the tr in my training, that this is a very critical resource for our kids. Oh, it is. And, it is and, a very uh, important program. I like just to see that we have checks and balances to make sure that these kids are using these services to the fullest. And when I'm talking to the fullest, I'm talking them reading or doing homework or and so forth. So it's we're working on that. It's very important because uh, if we want our kids to grow. I think that if we can help the parents uh, with the homework and so forth, um, and when they get home, they can continue their education and so forth, but it would help the parents a lot. Yeah, in fact, I'm working with the principals um, very closely to see how we can have better alignment of uh, regular school day with our after school program. So there is a connection, and we support the regular school program in our after school. Okay. 
Is there a parent component of this after school program? For assets, there is, we do have a literacy grant, but for ACEs, there is not. We should keep them informed of everything that's going on, but nothing for sp sp uh, specific training or additional um, training. No. Okay, and so what, what about, I'm sorry, go no, ahead. No, go ahead. And what about communication with parents as far as informational items? Um, you know what, we're working on that. I've, I've requested all of the site coordinators to have either a bulletin board and we're working on maybe getting some signage so that parent, we have all of our, um, you know, attendance policies, early release policies, sign out policies um, in a very visible place so everybody is aware of what our policies are. We also want to uh, kind of communicate all of our, what goes on in our after school to everybody. So we're working on, um, Increasing our communication and not just target it to those that s that stay for ACEs, not just those students and those parents uh, and the teachers that work with ACEs, but really open it up to the community and, and have a little bit more input and, and just be a little bit more transparent about what goes on and how the program works. So we're working on it. Okay. And I, I think what Mr. Well, I speak for myself, like program return on investment mm -hmm. is very critical that we show the parents that because of this service, they're getting something out of it. And um, that's why we need the parent involvement so they can buy into these programs. Uh, because you are, I mean, a critical resource. Right, and we do have, uh, we have very good turnout in all of our sites. We have waiting lists. And so we really do need to keep track of our attendance and follow our own uh, guidelines where if students are not attending regularly, then we make room for them, for the students on the waiting list. Okay, thank you. Board members, any more questions? No. Is there a motion to approve? This is, um, this is just a first reading, first so reading. we'll bring it back okay. um, for okay. a second reading and adoption. That's right. Okay. okay, so that was item L9. Item L10, approval of single plan for student achievement for 2015-2016. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Well, yeah. Is it second reading? Hold on. Uh, so. All right. Okay. Well, I, so I move to. There's a, okay, we need a motion for L9. Move. There's a motion by Mr. Calderon Jr. for L9. Is there a second? Second. There's a second by Mr. Ortega. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes 4 0. One in favor, Ms. Real, Mr. Calderon Jr., Mr. Ortega, myself, Mr. Calderon. Item L10, approval of single plan for student achievement for the 2015 16 uh, for dual elementary school. And let me just, uh, let me make. Um, a little correction here. It needs to say 2000. Are we talking about 2015, 2016 school year or fiscal year? Because it just says 2015, 16. What is it? It'd be a little bit of both. Um, fiscal year um, or s okay. well, so it's for the 2015, 16 funds. Um, but what is it? We have a fiscal year and we have a school year. So what? Is it should it should say school year. A school year. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let the record show that it needs to be school year. And, and thank you. No, thank you. Okay. So. So move. There's a, there's a motion by Mr. Calderon Jr. Is there a second? Second. There's a second by Mr. Ortega. If no further questions, all those in favor, please second five by saying aye. 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 Motion passes 4-0. Those in favor are Ms. Real, Mr. Calderon Jr., Mr. Ortega, myself, Mr. Calderon. Item L11, approval of variable ter uh, term waiver for Nancy Lucio for the 2015-2016 school year. Mr. Mr. Uh, Gonzalez. Gonzalez. Hmm? Almost. <coughs> Trustees, when it comes to the speech language pathologist positions, these are extremely difficult positions to find. And so we are very fortunate that we have one of our er very own um, teachers uh, who is a special ed teacher in our district, fully credentialed at Enrique Camarena Junior High School. So in order for her to assume a speech language pathologist uh, position, um, we would uh, we're recommending uh, to the board to uh, approve a variable term waiver for her in order to be able to provide these speech and language pathology services uh, for our students. Thank you. And as the board may know, these, uh, like he just said, uh, they're very hard uh, to come by. Uh, these people, people with these credentials, so. Mr. Gonzalez, so variable term means that if we do find a pathologist, we'll hire one, correct? Absolutely. That's mm -hmm. what it, okay. 
So, so, is there a motion? There's a motion by Mr. Calderon Jr. Is there a second? Second. There's a second by Mr. Al. You know, for the questions, all those in favor, please second and five by saying aye. 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 Motion aye. passes 4 0. Wedding in favor, Mr. Al, Mr. Calderon Jr., Mr. Ortega, and myself, Mr. Calderon. Item L12 Certificate Employment Report. Okay. So, I would like to make the motion to approve the Certificate Employment Report. Uh, with the exception of uh, under transfer of Mer Cosevina Mercado Cortez for the elementary school counselor for Maine's elementary. So I would like to, uh, to approve it without her, without that specific uh, item, with that specific uh, uh, person. So that's my motion. Second. That's a, uh, so I made the motion. There's a second by Mr. Ortega. No further questions? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes 4 0. Voting in favor of Ms. Real, Mr. Calderon Jr., Mr. Ortega, and myself, Mr. Calderon. Item L13, classified employment report. Is there a motion for L L13? Motion to approve. There's a motion by Mr. Ortega. Is there a second? Second. There's a second by Ms. Real. If there's no further questions, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes 4 0. Voting in favor of Mr. Al, Mr. Calderon Jr., Mr. Ortega, and myself, Mr. Calderon. Item M, reconvene to early closed session. We're not because we did everything. Item N, reconvene to open session. We're back. Item O, announcement of actions taken in closed session. There were no actions taken in closed session. And item P, I, uh, we need to adjourn. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion. motion. There's a motion by Mr. Cord uh, Calderon Jr. Is there a second? Second. There's a second by Mr. Al. If no further questions, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes 4 0. Voting in favor of Mr. Al, Mr. Calderon Jr., Mr. Ortega, myself, Mr. Calderon. This, this meeting is adjourned. Vámonos.